Hi, hi everyone. I'm Alexander Gosti from Kaspersky Lab, and usually at SAS I'm speaking about state-sponsored attacks, but not at this time. So let me present to you uh, my new research about new types of uh, cyber criminal attacks. And first of all, there is a short brief of financial cyber crime. It started from from scheming cons, credit cards, you know, this kind of cloning, scheming, etc., etc. And now we have attacks against banks, right? Like Carbonax story two years ago, or Blue Norov Group, uh, from yesterday presentation about SWIFT attacks. But money is everywhere, and uh, of course, not only in banks. Much, much more money involved in any kind of investment activity. And uh, let me present you. Um, a threat model, threat model of future attack in this, of, of this area. Uh, based on my experience from stock market in different countries, in Russia, Singapore, United States, I have to admit uh, there are some real incidents in past and more to come in future, unfortunately. Uh, there are four big targets for cyber criminals. It's retail investors, brokerage companies, investment funds and banks, and depositories. I'm especially not adding to this list a stock exchange as itself, as, as entity, because it's impossible to steal money directly from stock exchange, you know? It's uh, only about money of members who trade via stock exchange. So I ex exclude this part of my presentation. And let's start from something really, really simple. Retail investors. So here is some malware. Uh, which was created especially for stealing information about trading accounts. In 2007, Trend Banker uh, tried to steal access to Quick Platform. Quick Platform, it's most popular trading platform in Russia. I think 90% of Russian traders using Quick. Sorry, here is my own secret key from my Quick account. So this Trojan tried to steal this information and provide hackers access to. Uh, brokerage account. And in 2011, Truant Banker Mitela Kakorko was found and uh, it contained two models, one for Quick, as I mentioned earlier, and the uh, second model for Transac. Transac is also a very popular platform for Forex trading, not for stock trading, but for Forex. And this group was very active in 2013, 2015, mostly in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, at the end, in November 2015, about 20 guys were arrested in Moscow. Now metal almost dead. But, but what is retail investors? Who, who they are? It's private persons like me or you, or, and small businesses. And usually they trade via brokerage companies, via banks, and just imagine situation in any kind of way, like phishing attack, exploit kit, we have access to that broken, uh, for, <clears throat> for that trading account. So what's next? And uh, actually, it's the biggest problem for cyber criminals. Uh, because our task is, uh, let me check, uh, yeah, transfer money from victim account to hacker, hacker's account. Uh, it's illegal in most, in most countries because it's directly related with money laundering. Such transfers can be used to bribery. Just imagine you can send money via stock exchange to someone else, who knows. And of course, it's because cross-border uh, cross transfers, it's capital flow controls. So most of countries totally uh, have technically not permitted any operations between accounts to transfer money from one to another. But, but from, as I said, technical point of view, it's impossible, but they will in details. And uh, let me explain how it works. <coughs> uh, we have stocks on the market, and some of most popular of them have options on stock, for, for this stock, right? At the same time, we have market makers, usually brokerage companies, uh, who provide liquidity for, to order book and control, controls market price. Without market maker, it's possible to buy and sell option, options 
by non-market price, mostly, usually overpriced. And it was a real story in Russia a few years ago. And this trick is still working right now. We have option without market maker. There is a lot of options without market maker on, on the Russian market. And we have victim account with, I don't know, 10,000 US dollars in cash. And we have own hackers controlled account with maybe, I don't know, 10 uh, or 100 US dollars. What's next? It's, oh, 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 yeah, right. There is order book from Russian market. And in green area, you can see this is very, very overpriced uh, bid to sell options on price in 3,000, uh, 300,000 Russian rubles. In reality, uh, real market price is 10, right? 10. And there is no market maker on this order book. So, from hacker's account, we can put sell order at overpriced area, about 3,000, 300,000 rubles per option. And from victim account, we should buy this overpriced order. At the end of the trading day, <laughs> price at options calculated by stock exchange and it based on market price of underlying stocks, which is still at the same level. It's not was up to 100% up, right? And the price will drop from 300,000 rubles to the real price at 10 rubles. In total, hacker will have profit at 10, uh, <coughs> 10,000 US dollars, and victim will have loss at the same amount of money. So it's done. Uh, next area of interest for, for cyber criminals, uh, it's investment funds. In 2002, in London office of Goldman Sachs, there were uh, about 600 traders and right now, there are only two guys. Why? Because that's all about high-frequency trading, robots. Uh, for hackers, there are three most profitable areas of interest. Stealing of profitable robots and using them to own trade or selling them to competitors. Uh, second way, modifying robots by adding some delays in algorithm, for example, and, of course, it may lead to huge loss to the bank or investment fund. It looks like financial stocks. And using robots for market manipulations, for own profit. Here is a graph uh, from 27 February 2015 uh, from Russian ruble per US dollar trading from Russian stock market, uh, forex market, sorry. In five minutes, price of... This pair, look, it was dropped from 61 ruble per dollar down to 56. And then in five minutes, it was spiked up again to 66 rubles per dollar. So detailed log from uh, Russian uh, exchange shows six suspicious traders at, uh, <coughs> at that time. Here is first one, market goes down, then up, 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 down, and up again. Uh, here is some real deals. It was occurred at this time. It was one deal on 22,000 US dollars. But if we look at how big their orders are in reality, so there is information. It was six deals, six traders. Uh, biggest one was for... Yeah, exactly uh, 20, no, two, 20 million, of, oh my God. Okay, uh, it was a real incident with Russian Energo Bank. So, as I said, in five minutes, uh, price of Russian ruble was fluctuated for 10%, 5% down, 5% up. Uh, it was huge loss for bank. Yes, 50 millions of US dollars. And before uh, that, it was information, not before. In 
It was started new investigation, investigation by Russian Central Bank. It was very long investigation, actually 18 months long. And at the end, it ended with verdict. No direct profit for anyone. Maybe it was revenge from former employee, but, but as far as I know, a uh, few months before this incident, this computer from Dat Energa Bank was infected by Mitel, that banking Trojan with model for stealing access to trading accounts. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> and depositories. Depositories, it's a very interesting institution, actually. Uh, there is a short brief what it's exactly doing, but uh, of course, it's whole security. Securities in electronic form, also known as book and reform, or register of stakeholders, register of shareholders. And uh, uh, there are some different situations around the world. In some countries, there is only domestic depository, only one. For example, in Singapore, there is CDP. And uh, in other countries, there are a lot of private depositories and national level depository, like in Russia, we have Russian national set settlement depository, which holds all, uh, all Russian treasuries, for example, and 99% of all corporate and uh, cities uh, and bonds. But if you have access to depository database, you can do some funny things. <laughs> uh, for example, you can change ownership and hijack the, uh, an entire company. We've changed it, uh, register, you can borrow money from, from a bank. Like, look, I have big stake in this company, borrow me some money, bank said, okay, here you go. And you can do corporate trade to have full control on this company. And of course, of course you can sell shares on stock market and have profit. Uh, here is a true story from a certain country. Uh, hackers, it was a real story from last year. Hackers got access to the private depository and they changed ownership on 10% shares of a public company. At that time, market value, market cap of this company was 6 billion US dollars. And what's next? And a few days later, in totally another city, a person with passport, for this owner of the shares appeared in the local office of this depository company and asked it to provide him share certificate of his ownerships. And security team of this depository was very lucky because they tried to call to central office and ask about initial documents because there was in database this guy, this person, but there is no any um, paper documents, why this guy was added to database. So it was a suspicious situation. This guy was detained, later arrested, but nobody knows who in reality was behind this operation and who tried to steal 10% uh, shares of company which cost 6 billion US dollars. And second example, it's, I don't know, I like it really. It's a trick with dividends. Uh, just theoretical situation, like Acme Corporation announced it at 7% dividends, and we have access to the database of register, uh, register of shareholders, and the record day is 1st April, but ex-dividend date uh, day, two days uh, before, it's usually t t minus two, uh, at 29 March, at 6.45, when market closed, Everyone who owns shares of this company will have dividends. So if you have access to depository with, I don't know, for example, 5% of ownership of ECMA shares, at 640, you can change ownership every, every shares of this company to your account. And 10 minutes later, after market close at 645, at 650, you can change ownership back to real owners. And 20 days later, at 20 April, dividends will be paid to your account. A totally legal way you can transfer this money to any bank and spend it without any, any 
problem. So it's theoretical situation, but uh, as I said, we have real case with hackers who change ownership. Uh, we have another incident in different country where hackers got access to the national depository. Uh, they were lucky. I mean, not hackers, but uh, guys in depository because, because hackers got access only to back office uh, from that computer. They have possibility only to monitor that re register. So just checking who owns which shares, but no any changes will uh, allowed from that computer. But you can see it can lead to very, very big problem <coughs> in any day in any country. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much.